Hello and welcome to the Cheltenham Exchange Preview for the 2023 Cheltenham Festival. Uh, I'm joined by Cheltenham Exchange regulars, uh, John the Hammer and uh, Rain Man, Boss Man, Con Man, as he's well known, Mr Ian Rayner. Uh, we've also got uh, two fantastic guests that have agreed to join us to preview all the races for Thursday. They're both uh, Fat Jockey Forum members, so shout out to the Fat Jockey Forum. Uh, firstly, we have uh, Bo, who is also a regular on Rain It In, and according to his Twitter page, he is a Cheltenham obsessive, or he's Cheltenham obsessed. Oh, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Be all the channel, Bo. Yeah, very well. How are you? Yeah, good. Th thanks for coming on. No, not a problem. Thanks for and, having uh, me. Other fat, fat jockey member we've got on tonight, we have Paul Beck. Uh, who is also owners of, owner of uh, Jeffrey's Cross, who is currently trained by Harry Skelton. So uh, welcome to the channel, Paul. Although Harry would be really pleased with that. It was actually Dan that trained him. But oh, Dan, <laughs> sorry. Harry takes all the credit. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for okay. having me. Um, Thursday's races then. Uh, first race is the Turner's Novices Chase. Tell you what, Paul, why don't you break it down for us? Who's going to win the Turner's? Okay, look, first thing is I'm against Mighty Potter. I'm um, probably the, the only person in this world that is, but I'm against Mighty Potter. Um, well, I'm, I'm not convinced by his jumping, if, if, uh, if anything. Um, you know, he's got some, some pretty, pretty good jumps in him, but, um, you know, he tends to get in a little bit tight, um, and just two or three times he's got in, he's landed pretty steep, and I think there's a, a mistake in him at championship pace. Um, I think he could be vulnerable. Um, I also think Willie is going to go a little bit mob handed at him. Um, I think he's probably going to have at least three three against him. Um, we've got I am Maximus. I think is going to go there. Um, I think they're now confirmed. Whether they've officially confirmed James de Burley goes there or not, I'm not 100 sure. But I'm told James de Burley goes. Um, and obviously we've got to appreciate it. So I think he's going to. Um, try and take the race on with one of his. Um, and by doing that, it means Mighty Potter can't afford to give any of his too much rope. So um, I think it's going to be run at a fair old clip. There's a good chance that we're going to get softest ground on the Thursday as well. So, you know, it's going to be a bit of a test for him. Um, and I think it's going to test his jumping. Um, so, but I, the one I like for it is appreciate it. Um, we know that Willie is on record as saying he's his best novice chaser. Um, obviously disappointed at the Dublin Racing Festival. I'm happy to put that down to the trip. Um, I felt he's wanted a trip for some time, um, and I think he gets it for the first time here. I think the other thing for me is, you know, you just look back at their career so far, and, uh, you know, um, whichever way you look at it, appreciate it was the better bumper horse, um, he was the better hurdler, um, and I think he's going to be the better chaser as well. So I look at the other other contenders in the race, Bambridge. I think with the rain coming, I think possibly he goes to the Arkle. I can't understand why he's a point shorter than appreciate it. I don't get that at all. Um, so appreciate it for me, but I also think James de Burley is good value at 16 to 1 each way. I think that's a, a mad price. I think you have to ignore last time. You have to forgive last time. Um Time before that, that was much better than that. And again, Willie has always said he wants a trip. So I think he's a mad price at 16 to 1. I think that's where the value is. Um, and I really like to appreciate it. Excellent. Thank you, Paul. The uh, the thing I can't understand with Iron Maximus is why he's not been put in a handicap anywhere because he, he's got a rating of 134 over hurdles. Like, what, what what are they messing about with in these graded races over fences when he's he's got such a low rating over hurdles? It just doesn't make sense to me. Well, he's got a great leg action, though, Alex. Yeah, I can't trust him. He's not going to win anything with that leg leg action. No, but still off one th one thirty four. You'd imagine he could win something in a handicap somewhere. Yeah, well, yeah. possibly. But Willie's not big on uh, handicap chases, is he? No. Yeah, we're, we're probably going to come to that later, actually. Um, but uh, um, you know, Willie doesn't plot plot chases, does he? Well, I mean, I'd want him over hurdles. I mean, a Coral Cup or something off one three four. Absolutely. I don't know. Um, it just it makes you wonder what they actually think of him. Yeah, whether he's good enough, whether, you know, we've got an owner in uh, Michael Gretsch that's spent an awful lot of money. Um, he's going to want one of the festival, but, you know, do they really think he's all that? I'm not entirely sure they do. No, me either. What are your thoughts, Bo? Um, I've got two lays at the festival. 
Uh, one, and in no particular order, one is Honeysuckle and the other one is Mighty Potter. Um, I, I don't like him. I think I think he's... I think he's too short based on what the form suggests. I don't think the form is holding up that well, um, in my opinion. Um, and I think that I can't get out of my head the run last year at Cheltenham. Um, it was just, he, he looked to me like he was too kind of buzzy and he just kind of was over the top and he just didn't look like he really handled it, the occasion. So at the price, I'm happy to leave him. Um, to be honest with you, I don't think the race is great. Uh, I, at the prices, I'm going to give James to Burley another chance. He might have just bounced last time. Um, they do talk about that being a factor. So I think he's he's definitely better than the last run that he showed. Um, and I'd have him a lot closer to Mighty Potter. Um, I do like appreciate it. It's just he's nine. Um, so that would that would kind of put me off. Um, so yeah, I would I would side with James to Burley. Uh, maybe each way, but the prices that that's where I'll be thinking. Okay, that's two selections then for James de Burley. What are your thoughts, Johnny? I actually agree with the guys regarding Mighty Potter. I'm not a huge fan of him either, to be perfectly honest. Um, I mean, I can see why he's favourite, um, and you know, maybe he will take all the beating, but I think there's others in here that can uh, that can sort of give him a bit of a tough time in it. Um, I agree with Bo about him travelling over last year. He played up a little bit. Um, there could be an issue there regarding that. He didn't run any sort of race whatsoever. So it could happen again. And you don't really want to be taking this price, you know, with a horse who, who can sort of overheat in the prelims. Um, I'm sounding like a bit of a stuck record here, but I'm going to have to stick with Bambridge, aren't I? Because I put him up anti post for any race, you know, at 10 to 1. Um, I think the step up will help him as long as it isn't too soft. But the one good thing about him is he has got the course form. He, he obviously really likes the course. He, he won the pipe last year. He's uh, won a race here this season, albeit over two miles. Um, I just think he'll have a really, really good chance. Uh, you know, he's gone a little bit shorter now as well because the race isn't that strong. But I fancy him to go really, really close in this as long as it doesn't go, as long as the rain doesn't come too much on the Thursday and the, uh, the ground sort of no worse than soft, really. Do you not think there's a risk of him going to the Arkle now, John? Yeah, p potentially. I mean, like I say, I've got him any rates, so I'm sort of kind of covered in both camps, really. But uh, yeah, and I, I think he'd have less chance, obviously, in the Arkle with the with the horses that are currently left in there. So maybe that will sort of scare them away for this race because it does look a little bit easier. So, uh, I mean, if it does absolutely sort of hammer it down over the weekend and sort of Monday, early Tuesday, then, well, when the, they'll be up to Sunday, when it, where they'd have to declare him for that. So I'm not sure if there's that much rain about, is there, Alex, now at the weekend? I mean, it's supposed to rain a little bit Saturday night and then again Sunday night, possibly, but nothing too much over the weekend. It's just yeah. what comes in on Monday. I mean, there's very, but, very, yeah. for, very varied forecast for Monday, so. But they'll have to make the decision, won't they, on, on Sunday, won't they, yeah. for the article. So, um <laughs> I don't think it's come enough for him to, to go to the Arkle, to be honest, but, you know, we'll, we'll see over I mean, the weekend. It's it's soft now, from what the it's Clark soft, was it's soft in places. So, so I've not been really keeping up to date with it, to be honest, uh, because I just don't really trust weather forecasts that much. So I was going to look at it sort of Sunday night. Um, is there a chance we're going to start Tuesday on good to soft, or is it looking like it's going to be soft? Possibly. I mean, if it's good to soft in places now, I mean, there's not too much rain now forecast over the weekend. So, I mean, we didn't have anything this uh, really today after they'd done the um, the, the, the ground inspection. So, okay. I mean, it's pretty much three three clear days-ish, I guess. And it does dry really quickly, doesn't it? So mm -hmm. It's a bit of it's a been very windy as well. for your bet, John, isn't it? Because, you know, if they get good to soft on Tuesday for the Arco, it's not necessarily ideal for Bambridge. But if you get soft for... The Turner's on Thursday. That's not exactly ideal for Bambridge. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that that could happen, I guess. But you know, the bet's on now, isn't it? So I'm not going to be able to do much about that one. But, you know, I've got other horses covered, but um, more in the Arkle than this than this race, really. But uh, yeah, we'll just have to see. I might have to use the old um, Sky Bet twenty quid back on on this race, but we cover one of the others. And who do you fancy, Ian? 
I'm going to go against all the guys. I'm going to go with Mighty Potter. He's really impressed me this season. Um, so I think he's won. Uh, was it, um, before I go into that, I think you're saying that the guys are saying about when he, he was a bit fizzy in, uh, at Cheltenham last year. I think I've, I've read somewhere that they they shouldn't have run him or when when, when he when he did come out because I think he went against Fetzer Vice. So I'm not sure what what the, the problem was. That's but I think as you said, he was a bit fizzy, and I think he didn't he knock into some of the fences on the way and. Which is obviously just playing up, but uh, he's a lunatic. Yeah, <laughs> but I've, I've just been impressed to say he won his chase debut at Down Royal, I think, beginning of November. He won the Dream War, quite well beating Gallard de Menil and Banbridge. And I thought he was outstanding at the Dublin Racing Festival, won by eight and, a, uh, eight and a half lengths. I think he'd be adamantly chosen in Gallard de Menil again. I think this year, I think it's going to be similar to, to what we had last year, maybe not as small. But I would say that you would be lucky if you get about five or six runners in this race again. I think a lot of uh, looks like a, a lot of the horses are potentially going to try and avoid Mighty Potter and maybe step up for, for uh, up to the Browns. For what I can see, you got like um, I think Matt Fabulous probably won't go. So Gahard is going up to to the Browns. So Stage Star, unexpected party might go to a to a handicap uh, up. Uh, Banbridge, as you guys have just said, I, I think he potentially will go here. But they said this that with the ground, he could potentially go to the Arkle. But I'll, I'll be, I think you'd be hard pushed to get about five or six in this field. But uh, I'll go with Mighty Potter. Thank you, Ian. Um, I'm going to side with Appreciate It. Um, I think this is now his right trip. I think he's better he, now, he's a bit older. I think he'd be better over further. Um, I don't think he ran too badly at, at, in a Dublin Racing Festival. So some people are sort of saying he ran really poorly, but. I just think he just needs a bit further now. Um, I mean, he is nine, so he's entitled to to take his chance over a further, a, a slightly longer distance. Um, Matty said that he quite fancies um, stage star to place if it runs in this race. So it, it, he'd be looking to potentially do some kind of forecast with Mighty Potter and then stage star to place. So that rounds up the Turner's Novices Chase. We will move on then to the Potemps final handicap hurdle, a race which has changed slightly over the well since the last few years. Where uh, previously it was the first six in a qualifier that get that would get into this race, and now it's top four. So it could potentially change the the, the, the makeup of this race. You're not going to get horses that qualify in sixth, get no penalty, and then just sluice in. So, Johnny, who do you fancy in the Potemps? Oh, you again you've come to me on the race where I've had problems with haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> keeps doing this. Yeah, well I was I was already struggling. Then today, I mean Botox has wasn't declared for it, which was a bit of a shock to me because he wasn't declared for the stayers either. So um that was like my pick out the window. So I had to hastily have a look, another look through. Um and it's a race that I haven't really been through a lot yet due to time sort of commitments and that. But I'm actually trying to steer clear of the of the top of the market. Um because it's not a race I've done particularly well in in the past anyway. So I was trying to look for a bit of value. And I've stumbled across uh, one of your old favourites, actually, Alex, and that's Colt or each way in this. Um, his qualifier that he was in actually looked like one of the stronger ones, I thought, uh, with the likes of the bosses Oscar and Wakul in there. Um, and I think he's quite well weighted against them too now, because I think Wakul's gone on and, and done something again since. Um, also, the winner that day was Brandy McQueen. He was he was basically giving near enough two stone to in that race, um, and he only lost by sort of three quarters of a length. So I think he's waited to sort of reverse the places with Brandy McQueen as well. I just think twenty to one looks a little bit big in in what should be an open race, really. I mean, I know you say there's only four qualified, but there'll, there'll be still one or two sort of uh, holding a bit a bit back in some of those races and. Hopefully he's one of them. He might still have a few pounds up his sleeve. But, yeah, it's a bit of a, a tentative pick, really, like I say, because the Botox has not going. So, uh, yes, cold tour for me. Thank you, Johnny. But who do you fancy? Um, I, I do fancy Salvador Ziggy. Um, he's been bumped up to carrying 12 stone now. Um, I'm kind of hoping that Gordon's going to put a claimer on him. I'd like to see that, but... I do think he's got a few pounds up his sleeve off 147. Um, the ground might worry me a bit. Uh, I wouldn't want any more rain for him. I think he likes it a bit sort of on the better going. Um, I didn't actually realise how many horses, how, how little sort of numbers there are in here. So 
we've only had 28 confirmed. Um, yes, yeah. See, I think only four more to come out. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if that's whether to do to do with like the change of the, the rules from the six places down to the four. You've got sort of um, smaller. I mean, will we get a full field, do we think? We may do. I mean, we lost I one of the qualifiers as well, didn't we? One of them got rained off. So we lost a qualifier and each race had two less qualifiers. So it just looks a bit different, doesn't it, this year? Yeah, I mean, the, there's not anything re really in here I massively fancy. I like Salvador Ziggy. That top, that form in with uh, Home by the Lee, I think, is top form. Um, but, yeah, that would, outside of that, I wouldn't really have a Scooby, to be honest. <laughs> I, I, I like that. Salvador Ziggy is one of mine as well that I put up anti-post. Um, that form from the, the, the Cheltenham race in October, the qualifier, I think is going to be very key. I mean, he's only four four lengths behind shoot first, and he's now massively better off at the weights than him. So, um, he, they do they do really like shoot first, though. They're, they're talking about yeah. him as being like a stayers horse for next year. Mm. So, uh, I'm just happy to leave him at the price, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, same. It's too short for me for this kind of handicap. But yeah, that, that'd be mine, Salvador Ziggy, and then possibly might even have a little sneak on Coltor as well, Johnny. So, you two have have, have nailed my my two fancies for this race. Uh, Ian, who do you like for this? Well, after um, you said about Salvador Ziggy in, in one of our shows and, and you, you put him up anti post, I did back him. So I, I have to hold my hands up and um, say I did. I, tell you, I think it was quite interesting. He got put away after his fourth at Cheltenham. And I can see the angle on both, really. Say so Ziggy was carrying 12 stone that day. Uh, I think he had a rate of 145. So he's only gone up a couple of pounds. And shoot first, I think, has gone up 10. I think he was 129 and now 139, came in 11 6. Uh, and I think I had a claim on board as well that day at Cheltenham. Uh, was it, um, is it Philip Burns? I think was on that day, yeah, yeah. I think it was um, seven pounds he claimed, I think, yeah. So I can see. So I, I have back Salvador Ziggy, and of course, it wouldn't be uh, a preview without mentioning a Henderson horse. <laughs> so I'm gonna <laughs> the, the one. Uh, and, and it's actually surprisingly, you don't normally have any in the per temp, so it's it's quite interesting. He might have about two or three in this one that I was quite uh, visually impressed with was I thought was Captain Morgs. Uh, I think he's gone for one three four to one four one, carrying eleven eight. But I think his win at Cheltenham in December was uh, I was very impressed and visually uh, quite impressed. So that could be one I could play on the day. But uh, I, I think I'll join you guys in the Salvador Ziggy camp. Excellent. And Paul, Paul, how about you? Are you joining the Salvador Ziggy camp too? No, I'm not. I think um, I actually think Shoot First will probably win this. I think uh, Charlie Burns thinks he's got a graded horse in a 139. Um, I don't really want to put up a three to one shot for this, I haven't said that. Um, but I have been all over, over him like a rash since that qualifier. Um, so I think, you know, given the makeup of the race, I think you have to look, at, uh, look for each, each way value. You know, there's a whole bunch of horses. So, you know, single single figure prices, and it just it's a it's a weird looking market, really. And I think there's quite a bit of value, um, sort of lower down. Um, I'm I do quite like Captain Morgs as well. You know, um, I, I was impressed by that uh, that qualifier. I'd heard beforehand that uh, they played around with his wind, and you know they thought they they found the key to him. Um, and we know Henderson had said very early on he thought he was very very good. Uh, based on his homework, um, it's the first time I'd really seen him do it on on the race course. So I think there's potentially quite a lot more to come from him. Um, so he'd be the one of the Henders and horses that I, that that I like. That said, I think he's also got Mill Green in there. Um, that was third last year off one three eight, maybe I think it was something like that. I'd be quite interested in him if they, if they put a claim on him, if they took seven pounds off him. I know he's getting on in years now. Um, but if they took seven pounds off his back, I'd, I'd be quite interested in him. But he'd be more a play on play than final decks if that's what they did. Um, the, the other one that I like uh, at a price is uh, Hector Javalex. Um, I think he's on a nice mark. He, he got the important course and distance winning the book on New Year's Day. Um, they then qualified him, uh, just basically holding him up and pushing him into the fourth qualifying spot at Huntingdon. Um, if you bear in mind that he's always up at the head of affairs, he's run up with the pace. Um, you know, that clearly was a bit of confidence around, around his mark. 
uh, just pushing him into that qualifying space. So I think 16 to 1 is quite a nice price for him. Um, and he's one of those real nice, smooth traveling types that I like. Um, as I say, it's a wide open market, I think, outside of uh, shoot first. He's the kind of horse that I'd really like at a price. You know, 16 to 1, I think, is really good for him. I, th- I did see today, Paul, that uh, Lily Pinchin's been uh, jocked up on Hector Javelin, yeah. so she'll take three off. Yeah, she will. But although she's been taking that three off all the way through. Okay. I would I would just like to say that in this market, I'll probably um, back whatever I see Mickey O'Sullivan jocked up on. Um, I think he's a really, really promising young jockey. Uh, he's obviously won two grade ones this year on for Barry Connell. Uh, two brilliant rides as well, I'd say, and he claims five. So he's going to be very in demand for these handicaps. So whatever he's jocked up on, I will probably blindly back. <laughs> Paul, it was quite interesting you mentioned about shoot first and thinking he's potentially a, a graded horse in a, in a handicap. I saw that Paddy Power posted their, um, their stairs hurdle market for 2024. And as mm. soon as it opened, he was 50 to one for the stairs. And that, that, that well, that, that very quickly disappeared. Um, yeah, that was Paul. Paul Hoover at the 50s. <laughs> 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 yeah. uh, perfect. Um, and then Matty's put up his uh, his favourite horse. Uh, <laughs> I can't believe I'm going to say this, but he likes Bear Gills. So, oh, you know, no. No. Maybe from me, oh. but... Yeah. It's, 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 Which it's was his favourite I know. Remember Sorry, when he uh, was being tipped for a volleyball? That was weird, wasn't it? For big girls. Yeah. That's no, no, no interest in it for me. If, but... you thought, if you thought he had the same level of ability two years ago when, was he fourth in, in Brave Monk games, Ballymore? Yeah. Um, you know, he's on a really nice mark, isn't he? But, you know, he's got everything to prove. He can't you know, jump. Look, that, that, that's true. He couldn't jump then, though, but to be If fair, this was a bumper, I'd fancy him. And he qualified yeah, by a nostril as well, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, Get him in the Cesaro. He, he yeah. scraped mm. in. <laughs> Perfect. So uh, that that uh, rounds up the attempts. Then uh, we will move on then to the Ryanair Chase. And where else to start? But with Ian, Ian, your the love of your life, Mister Nicky Henderson. He's got a, a runner in this. <laughs> Ian, what are your well, thoughts? He, he's. Got, I have to say, he's run at Ascot. He shocked me i think because i think i was at, at the point with shishkin i know he's had he had two bad runs and i think he's had another one has had his wind done um he ran poorly in the uh in the tingle creek i think it was and I've, i was just getting to the point i thought oh, i can't i can't back him i can't forgive him and then he does that and wins brilliantly in the bet fair ascot chase and he was superb he, fakir dudery no it was fakir dudery was third um seven limps behind it was pete door sorry it was 16, 16 limits behind, and he was just outstanding. I think the price just collapsed after that. Um, obviously, the step up in trip is is a, what I, I didn't think he would he would do, and you know, he's took it like a duck to water. And then since since Alaho's come out, it's is he another banker um, for the whole festival? But it, I can't see much past him to be honest. Again, it possibly be a small field. Um, it was a Giggins Town horse. I can't think the, the name of it. I potentially could be uh, the threat. Um, my mind's gone blank. I can't think what, what it's called. Um, but it'll come Fury to me. Road. Uh, yes, that's it. Fury Road. Yeah, thank you. I think he could be he could be the threat to Shishkin. Um, maybe do the the full cast on the day. But yeah, I can't I can't see much past Shishkin to be honest. As boring as it is. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to go with a forecast on this race as my my tip. I'm going to go Ooh. with uh, Shishkin to win, and then Jana Dill come in second. Um, a, a lot of the vibes before his race, uh, when he beat um, Horton Colour uh, the last day, was that he he looked like he wasn't fit in the parade ring, and he'd come on for the race. And I mean, if he comes on uh, comes on for that after winning, I mean, I think he's going to have a hell of a chance to to beat a lot of these horses that are behind Shishkin. So yeah, that'll be my selection. Uh, Paul, what are you what are you fancying? I have doubts about general, general actually. Um, you know, it's had a, had a long time off. Um, and I think, you know, the, the fact that they said they thought there might be something to work on him, I think he might have given himself quite a hard race, actually. Um, that would worry me about general. It's a horse that I actually do quite like. Um, 
you couldn't be getting stuck into Shishkin now at 11 to 8 on. Um, you know, yeah, sure, he's the, the most likely winner if he if he retains the ability that we've seen previously. Um, but there are doubts about him, aren't there? You know, um, you know he's, he's had that time off. He absolutely flopped in his um, uh, arc up. Um, and Urge, and, and obviously, um, you know, proved to be the horse that broke him, shall we say. Um, he's come back, they put him up in trip, you know, he beat a decent field, but it wasn't, a, wasn't really grade one field. Um, I do think, um, that the, the race they gave him for that's probably a bit too much, if I'm honest. Um, but even so, you've got Blue Lord, who Willie had said all along wanted at least two and a half miles. The reason he couldn't get him up there and kept him to two was because he was too keen. Um, He's a he's a blue Brazil, um, and they're, they're pretty versatile in terms of trip. They tend to be quite heavily influenced on the downside. Now he's out of a, um, a mare that would suggest he probably wants two and a half at least, and you know three at some point would be in his range. So I don't think it's unreasonable for to expect some improvement from him um, on this season's race and post ratings. He's only seven pounds behind Shishkin. Obviously, at two miles, you know, stepping up to two and a half, the hope would be that there'd be some improvement there from him. Um, can he be a proper grade one horse? Well, Joe's out. He has, to, he has that to go and prove, and Shishkin's done that in the past. But I think there's sufficient doubt about Shishkin to try and at least find an each way alternative, and the each way alternative for me would be Blue Lord. Okay, thank you very much. And, Bo, what are you fancying? Uh, nothing really. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Shishkin was really impressive uh, the last day. Uh, he's just uh, odds on with the problems he's had. I wouldn't back him. I mean, it's not beyond the realms of possibility that he bounces or he just doesn't run a race. And then there's Nicky's got some sort of excuse to come out with as to why uh, why he didn't run his race. Um and then in the in, in behind, there's not really a lot of fancy. Um, as a tentative selection, I think I'd probably put Hitman each way. You're going to get three places, I think, over two and a half miles. I think he's probably a better horse than a lot of them in the market. Interestingly, over, fence, over fences, he's run 13 times and he's placed in the first three 11 times. Um, so he's a consistent enough horse. Um yeah, as a tentative selection. I just think a lot, a lot of these horses have question marks over them. Um, so, with the each way play, I mean, he's 20, 22 to 1, so that's not really no bet. He's jocked it with Harry Harry Cobden on, so, yeah. Little each way selection for you there, then? Yeah, the each way selection. And, and Johnny, I saw you uh, looking pretty happy when I mentioned Janadil. Is that your yeah, selection? Yeah, I mean... This race is it's like full of horses who have let people down, isn't it? Really, over the last couple of years. Um, I mean, if the Shishkin turns up that turned up at Ascot, then obviously he'll win. But he, like the guys have said, he's bounced before, hasn't he? And he wouldn't be shocked to um, to see that happen again. But they do need to find seven or eight pounds to beat him. Most of the others. Um, it's interesting. I went to a preview. That preview I went to again on on Wednesday night. That. One of the fellas on, on the stage there said they don't know whether to either back him to win or lay him for a place because he's one of them that he could he quite easily pull up, couldn't he? You know, it, it's happened before, hasn't it? And I think if he is struggling early, you you could see the same thing happen again where he's pulled up after three or four fences again. So, it, you know, it's an interesting thought that was. But, yeah, on to Janadel. I think he's like one of these, again, keep going on about him, but uh, place bets on the day. I think he's one that would go in my place bet for like a treble, a place treble. He'd be one of the first names down. So uh, I'd probably just put him up for a, for a place in this, maybe back him on the exchanges uh, for a place you might get slightly better odds. Excellent. Thank you. I half expected somebody to put Envoy Allen uh, for an each way shot for this, actually. I'd love to, but I can't. <laughs> I was, I was really to down. just disappointed. <laughs> He's hurt me so many times. <laughs> this is the time he'll, he'll, he'll win by 10 lengths, Johnny. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Don't worry, I'll be covering him in some sort of form, won't I, on the day? But <laughs> after about 10 Guinness, I'm bound to, won't I? <laughs> <laughs> it's only right. Yeah, it is. 
And uh, Matty said that his uh, his selection for this race would be Garlo to place uh, if he runs in the race. Still not sure whether he's going to run here or potentially the Gold Cup, are they? So um, they they confirmed today. I think that they were going to go. Probably. Yeah, oh, I forgot I to that. mention Garlo. I, I was going to say he has deserted him. him. <laughs> Is that for this race? They've confirmed. They've they've said he's going to run in Bow. Yeah, I was reading it on Twitter earlier. Okay. The uh, the fountain of all knowledge. <laughs> I totally forgot that. Yeah. You put the bloody thing up to 50 to 1, didn't I? Yeah, I, I have as well. I, I, I backed him. Um, I think I backed him at 66 to 1, actually. Um, and I just assumed, with all the noise that they'd made, he was either going to go to the, the, uh, the Gold Cup or not go at all. So I'm actually pleasantly surprised I've actually written that better. So I've got a question for you guys. In order for him, for Garlo to go or to qualify for the National, does he need to run in the Gold Cup? Or can he still qualify in the Ryanair? I thought they had to run over three miles. Well, over okay. three miles, didn't they? I thought, I thought that was what they'd said, but I'm not 100% sure. Did they not say that they thought it was one for next year? I might, might be mistaken with that. Might okay. be. That would make sense, wouldn't it? Yeah. Well, it's seven now, year. I think. Plenty of time. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll move on then to the Stairs Hurdle, which is uh, dominated in terms of the favourite as Blazing Cow, who's been running, then not running, then running, then not running. I'm sure there'll be some news over the coming days that he's injured, and then a couple of days later, we say he's running. So who knows? Uh, but what do you make of this race? Um, I don't really know what to make of Blazing Cow, to be honest. Um, I don't know what to believe. One minute it's one thing, the next it's another. So. Um, he was very impressive on his comeback, but um, for the price he was for the stayers and for the price he's been all year, really, you would have expected him to do that. So it wasn't anything that I was kind of totally blown away with, but happy enough, I suppose. Um, looks like Marie's Rock's not going to go here now. Um, looking at the exchanges today, it looks like the mayor's, but obviously a bit of time left. Um I quite like Classical Dream, which is quite a crazy thing to say, I suppose. But um, I'm not entirely sure what the plan is because they've been very quiet on him. Uh, we've not seen him for a while, but they've been very quiet. But I think last year his undoing might have been that they ran him uh, before Cheltenham too close. Um, I mean, him and him and Florin Porter were definitely the two best uh, three milers in Ireland last year, or, or in general, really. And he didn't really run his race at Cheltenham. Um, I, I think the ride that they gave him was um, not what they've been doing previously with him. <clears throat> so I thought that was a bit odd. Um, but yeah, I just think he's overpriced. Uh, I think he can go closer than last year. And I mean, I, I really don't fancy Florian Porter off his prep. Um so, yeah, I think it might be a weaker race than last year because Florin Porter for the last two years has been sort of really, really impressive to me. So, yeah, classical dream at 11 to 1. Excellent. Johnny? Yeah, well, this is the race that's generally full of nutters, isn't it? You know, you get some some of the horses in here you just can't trust, can you? One day they're brilliant, next day they're out the back of the TV. Um, i probably changed my mind five or six times during the season. and But it is a race that I've kind of made a book on throughout the season. So I've got a lot of the main players covered, really, to a decent amount. So I'm not really, you know, bothered who wins, to be perfectly honest. But <laughs> uh, Blazing Cal probably be the one if I had to pick one for win purposes. I just think he's, like, more the up-and-coming horse. He's pretty lightly raced. Obviously, he has had his injury problems and all the faff going on around him. Um but I'll probably put him up for win purposes. Looking at the each way value, I'd, I, I'll probably end up sticking a few quid each way on Dashiell Drasher, to be honest. He's a sort of horse that gives his all. He'll he'll race out, you know, quite handy, maybe maybe lead. Um, he's quite hard to peg back at times. He just keeps galloping. Um, although he might not win, he's 25 to 1. So for like a place each way or, or a place, uh, uh, he's, he's quite a good price. Um he was behind uh, the, the French horse Gold Tweets last time. Is it? Is he confirmed to run? By the way, Gold Tweets. Yeah, apparently. Yeah, yeah supplemented. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he was a surprise last time, but they, you know, made know a little bit more about him this time. I mean, he might go well again, but yeah, I, I'd go Dashiell Drasher each way and um, Blazing Cal tentatively for the win. Um, I'm going to go with if she runs in this, Marie's Rock. 
Um, I still think she will run in this. I'm not, I'm, I think there was a lot of panic, wasn't there, on Twitter over the last couple of days about all the rain. Some people posting that there's been a monsoon in Cheltenham. I walk outside and it's dry. So <laughs> I'm not quite sure where <laughs> all the come from. <laughs> been driving me What's insane. <laughs> so, so much fake news. Um, so, yeah, I think I still think she'll run in this race. Uh, and if she doesn't, I'll probably take a chance each way because, I, I mean, I don't really fancy any of the ones towards the top of the market. I'll probably take a chance on Ashdale, Bob, uh, each way. I think he's about 25 to 1. Either that or I'll try and find somewhere that's going to have, you know, nice place terms for just a place. And he was second at, in the Christmas hurdle to home by the Lee, only beating three lengths. Um, he ran at Punchstown last year and he was second to Classical Dream, only beating a length. So, I mean, he's there or thereabouts. I'd, I'd fancy him to get a place. I wouldn't really want to back him each way because I think the win part of the bet is pretty much dead. But um, that would be my selection. Ian? You put up Blazing Caller eighteen to one, wasn't it? In one of our anti post videos, it was, yeah, it was basically it was one. I think it was my very first anti post pick back in what was it October time? I think it was, and the, the nerves were going on when he wasn't coming out, and we was hearing things. He's as you said earlier, he's hearing that he's not in, he's not in, and it. But yeah, then, um, I was very impressed with um, with his win, um, winning the Boyne Hurdle. It's a it, Charles Burns has kept us on our toes. Um, so he obviously I have backed him. Marie Swatka would definitely on the day if she runs in this, I would definitely, definitely back her. I think she can stay the three mile. She was super impressive at, at Cheltenham when she won. Uh was it New Year? Yeah, New Year's Day. I think that was a over two mile five, but I think she could definitely stay the three mile. Um, and I need to give a shout out. I've done for dear old Paisley Park. I have backed him each way. It, granted, it was before <laughs> the one where gold treat um one at uh one at Cheltenham, so maybe his last harass he may have a have a chance at the places, but um I've so I've, I've definitely played Blazing Carl, but I think Marie Swat could be the one uh, if she runs in this. But I've I'm opposite to you, Alex. I think with, with this uh, soft ground, I think she may go mares now. I think the ground's gonna dry up. I think we get a good mm. soft ground, but good to soft. That's my opinion. It's not it's just one man's opinion. Yeah, I'd <laughs> definitely have a bet on her on the day. I think she's super talented. Hmm. Yeah, if she wants to run in it. M Matty's very keen on flooring Porter. He says he only ever wins when he comes to Cheltenham. He gets prime for this, so that's his selection. Wouldn't be for me, but that's who he's keen on. Uh, this is it. I, I can see that angle is he, he he only ever wins at Cheltenham, but he's been well beaten by home by the lead twice, and he's just not had the same preparation as the last two no. years. No, um, that would worry me. But agreed. What are your thoughts, Paul? Well, it's, it's definitely wide open, isn't it? You, you, yeah. There's not a lot to choose, really, um, from the top five or six in the market. So, you know, it's, it's more of a process of elimination for me. Um, can't agree with uh, with Bo with Classical Dream. Um, they've had all sorts of problems trying to just get him right. Um, I think there's a good chance he doesn't even make the race. And if he does, he, he's probably going to need it anyway. Um, Florin Port's had a horrible prep as well, as we know, um, although... Gavin Cromwell thinks he's got him back on track now, but you know, with uh, all the talk that he was, you know, a good chance he was going to be out of the festival. How fit is he going to be compared to previous years, or how match sharp is he going to be? Um, and he's one of those horses that tries pretty hard at the front, so you know, you'd be worried about him. Um, as we've already said, if you believe everything, everything you read, Blazing Carl's had a, a pretty tough prep this year. Um, he, he's into, he's intermittently lame. The problem with him is he, he's uh, he's trapping a nerve in his hock, um, so they have to leave him off uh, when that happens. So there's a ri the risk with him is you know that could happen in the immediate lead up. I think they're clear at the moment um, and they expect to to have a have, have a run. But you know when he saw him the last day, he was fit as anything. So they've had a clear run for that. He was he was as lean as anything. Um, so that leaves home by the lead to Hoopoo and Marie's Rock for me as the other three that have had clear preps. Um, the easiest one of those for me to let go is home by the lead. He's the um, he's not the poor floor importer from a couple of years ago. He's not the up and comer that floor importer was. He's he's exposed by comparison. Um, and what we, we the only thing we really know about him this season is he's basically better than Astor Bob. You know that's about it really, isn't it? Um, yeah. So you know. He's been Florian Porter. We know Florian Porter was a shadow of himself at the time, um, and somehow this got you know this horse is the uh, 
a sort of trendy punters pick, pick on all these uh, all these preview nights. I, I don't get that at all. I think they're just miles off and they're just guessing, if I'm honest. And there's nothing that forms as yet he wins this. <laughs> Um, what do you mean about Johnny Dineen? Yeah, that's well, yeah, he's he's good. He's a good watch, isn't he? He's good fun. We'll just say that. Um, <laughs> look, Mar- Marie's Rock's got a good chance of improving for, for the tri- uh, step up to three miles. Um, I don't think she'll come here. I'm, I'm in the opposite camp. Actually, the the owners have been quite vocal in the last few days, saying you know the weather makes them fairly firm that they they want to go for the mare's hurdle. Um, but Nicky Henderson's the trainer at the end of the day, and I guess he'll ultimately make the decisions. But they've been pretty publicly vocal about that, and I think that's now now a very difficult decision for for Nicky Henderson to make. And I think there is a, just a feeling from them that you know the, the cards are being shuffled to suit certain owners. So how true that is, I'm not, I don't know. But that's read between the lines. That's the that's the way it feels. Um, so Hooper is the one that tops my ratings. Um, there's a lot of rain around. Uh, it's possible it's going to be soft ground on Thursday. There's no doubt he's decent. He's improved massively for the step up to three miles. Um, so logically, he'd be the selection. Um, but despite that, and all, and uh, despite his time, oh, I'm going for Blazing Cole. Um, you know, he's short enough at three to one with a few niggly doubts, I suppose. But I think he's the best horse in the race. Um, you know, you go back to his novice season. Um, uh, he ran particularly well at Cheltenham I thought um, I was really taken by him in his novice season he just looks like a horse that wants to win do you know what I mean you know you, you get these horses every so often that come along that just get their head down they just just try they try really hard they've got, they've got the, the class so I think he's going to win I think Tehupu will be the one that chases him home excellent mm. thank you very much um that rounds up then the Stayers hurdle. Some good selections in there. Hopefully, we'll, a few of them either come in, win on, in each way, some places. So, yeah. Let's move on then to the plate handicap. Uh, currently dominating the market as well by So Scottish, who's now as low as seven to two for this, which I think is I mean, clearly as well handicapped. But I mean, I think that's a disgusting price, really. Ian, who do you fancy? So Scottish. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I, I think it, if there's such a thing as a, an obvious horse, I think it's him. Um, obviously, the, he had his um, they had an appeal for his um, his mark to be dropped today, so he's now down to one four two. Um, I think it's, what, what was it? One four three got dropped yeah. on the pound. Oh, um, what's the point? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, to me, just he. He's got a similar sort of profile to the Shunter when the Shunter won the plate this time, and it just seems like a carbon copy. I know he won a novice chase at Carlisle, and I think he was a uh, second to Booth Hill at Ascot in November, then put away. But it, yeah, it, it just it it just seems too obvious to me. Mm-hmm. Um, it, but again, as you said, that the price is very very short. But um, it's just he's he's got a, a good weight, so he, he could be one to look probably keep in mind and one i'm just i haven't backed him yet uh, well i'm just i was looking for an each way play um a fugitive actually i thought was quite interesting he's had a couple of runs at Cheltenham this year in november and in january and placed both times over two mile five he's got uh let's have a look what i've got here so he's got 11 six mark of 149 carrying 11 six and i think he was a length behind il Rodoto, who i believe will, will be in the same race as well I think he was only beaten in length behind Iwadoto. Iwadoto that day was carrying 10 12, and Fugitive was carrying 11 3. So he could be a potential each way around 12 to 1. So, uh, yeah, so so Scottish to win and Fugitive each way for me. Excellent. Thank you, Ian. Johnny, what do you think? Yeah, not one of my best races, is It's normally the, the race I leave right till the end because um, you do get quite a few horses double entered, don't you? So. You tend to pick one and then it goes somewhere else. So I've got a couple of tentative choices. Uh, first one, if he gets in, is Frero Bamboo off 135. Um, there's quite a few. I think he's 29 in the in the list. There's five, five to come out, John. But there's yeah, there's going to be at least that many to come out, I think. Because if you look, there's quite um, a lot. There's, there's the likes of Ian Maximus ahead of him. That's a run. He'll get in. He should do. Shani Auto and Colares is in there, and there's a few others who are fast or slows, double entered. So um hopefully he'll get in. Um 
and he's been running over the minimum distance a lot of times, but I think the step up and trip would definitely be of interest in this race. The other I had down was Alexia de Nuts, but he's not in it now. He's been pulled out today, so he'll probably go to the Grand Annual. So I turn my attentions to Riviere de Tell for Gordon, who I was really keen on last year. Um, she normally goes in graded and listed races, really. Um, I think this would actually be a first time in a handicap, perhaps. So that would interest me. I quite like those first time in a handicaps. Um, and Gordon did it a couple of years ago, didn't he, with uh, Mount Ida, who had a similar profile to, to her. Um, I think Riviere de Tell's probably a bit higher in the in the weights than Mount Ida was, but I think at 20 to 1 each way, it's a bit of a, you know, a bit of a stab, but I think she'd run quite well. I think she's going in the Mare's Chase, isn't she? Gordon's been talking about for her, Riviere de Tell. Yeah, uh, right. So, mm. yeah, again, it's one of them, isn't it? She's double entered, so mm. um, we'll see, see if she comes here or not. Uh, that Ferro Bamboo was another one, one that I was going to pick put up as well. I mean, ran third in the uh, Grand Annual last year, staying on at the finish, only beating yeah. six lengths. So, but yeah, it's just whether whether it gets in. And then the other one I was going to put up was uh, That's All Right Gino. Um, thought it ran really well when second behind Stage Star at Cheltenham in January. Um, was second again um, at Kempton uh, on the Adonis Hurdle Day. I don't think he was particularly suited by the track. Um, and I think he'll probably go one better here. Well, potentially one better here. I, th I think he's still well, well handicapped, so that'll be a, a tentative selection for me if um, Ferro Bamboo doesn't get in. Bo, what are your thoughts? Um, this sounds absolutely mental, <laughs> but I'm going to put up Cool Cody. Okay. Back to back. 12 year old. So the the sort of trend for the last few years in Cheltenham handicaps has been sort of novices novices in handicaps coming over and then and, and romping up i.e statement etc but with the way that the BHA are now sort of dropping older horses much quicker I think you might start to see um older horses having been much more competitive and having much more of a chance um I mean Cool Cody won it last year um, and he'll be running this year off, I think it's two two pound below? Two it? pound lower. Two pound lower than when he won it last year. So he's running off the same weight that he won the Paddy Power in December before he won the <clears throat> plate. Um, I mean, he's not done a lot this season. He's potted around and, and run a few crap races, but he did win a grade two this season around Ascot. Um Admittedly, it's a two-runner race, so I'm making the stats fit the fit the agenda. But you know, <laughs> uh, he still won a grade two, so I'm not having it that he's gone at the game. <laughs> we um, all do it, though. Don't worry. Oh yeah, everybody does it. Everybody <laughs> does it. Uh, and at the price, he's—I mean, he was forty to one, but I think today because of the confirmations, he's been shortened a bit. But yeah, I just, I just think he's two pound lower than last year. I don't really like the favourite, so I'm going to take him on. So yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna tip a twelve year old, which probably has never been done and will never be done again. Well, I'm sure um, people would have, people would have criticised if you put him up last year and and he went on to it, didn't he? So I mean, he he loves the course. Um, yeah. Matt would be very happy because he he's one that Matty's been very keen on for a long time. Yeah, just loves it at Cheltenham and yeah, two pounds lower than when he won it last year. I mean, he's clearly been campaigned to get his his mark down, hasn't he? So. Um, well, you'd hope so, or or he's just uh, kind of lost it. So. But then, if he if he just completely lost it, would they run? I don't know. If he completely lost it, he wouldn't have won a grade two. That's my argument. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Excellent, Paul. What do you think? Well, I'm just just a follow up from Bo. I think he, he's definitely been campaigned to to defend his uh, title, so to speak. Um, I, I have backed him each way. Um, you know, I make a book like John does, as, as most of you guys know. So, you know, he's one that had to go in the book, really. Um, but I would just be a bit concerned now that the ground might go for him. I don't, don't think, um, I don't see him winning if on soft ground. Um, anyway, setting him aside, um, I can't have so scotches at all. Um, don't agree with Ian. I think he's been campaigned very specifically to sell to JP um, and very cleverly hyped. Um, and people have bought into that hype. But I don't see anything in what he's done to give him, you know, the chance that uh, the market says he's got. 
you know, basically he's he's won a five runner race at Tipperary and he won a three runner race at Carlisle and he's a three to one favourite for this. It's just it's just an obscene price, really. Um Fast and slow could be really unexposed. Whether he goes here or whether he goes to the Ultima, I don't know. Maybe if softer ground, I suspect it's here. And if it's quicker ground, he goes to the Ultima. Um, but, you know, very inexperienced. Two completed chases, so I couldn't have him, um, particularly with an amateur on board. Um, that wouldn't be a good combination. Sorry, amateur on board? Wrong race. We'll do that one later. Um, <laughs> we won't have an amateur. On, well, he might have an amateur on board, but I don't think he will. Um, you can but, have him. <laughs> just as, <laughs> just as a, 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 a two, uh, two chase under his belt that would just worry me slightly um this is really a race for for previous uh course course at course or course and distance horses um you know we already know that um uh cool code has been there and done that and worn the t-shirt so using that criteria it, it, you come up with quite a short list so you've got il Rodoto, fugitive midnight river that's all right gino um, and you can use if you use the um, uh, Grand Angle form for last year, you've got Ferro Bombu as well. So that would be quite a neat little short list alongside uh, Cool Cody. Um, Ferro Bombu's got that, as I say, that really good Grand Angle form from last season. Um, he was also third behind um, Editor Jeet at the international meeting uh, last year. Um, and that one's third favourite for the champion chase now. So um, he looks as though he's crying out for a step up in trip. Um, he's got a breeding line that will support that as well. Um, but on both sides of his breeding, they tend to end up as two and a half and then ultimately stay in chases. So I'd say everything he's done really over two miles has been a bit, bit of a bonus. Um, I already think he's a well-handicapped horse, even if he went to the Grand Annual. Um, but soft ground and the step up in trip, I think he could prove to be a long way ahead of his mark. He's 135 for this. I think he's got the potential to be a 150 horse. Um, I think he could absolutely dot up in this. I, I like him an awful lot. There is just that little bit of risk that he goes to the Grand Annual. Um, and as, as John was saying, um, you know, he needs, still needs five, five to come out as well. So, there is some risk of him not getting into the race. And if that was the case, it'd just be a toss-up between the others for me. Um, so my reserve for, for him would be Il Rodoto. Um, and the only reason I split them that way is I really rate Harry Cobden. I think he's a great jockey. I think he's the best of the, the jockeys on those, and I think there's nothing to split them. So Ferro Bumbo for me uh, with a bit of a backup with uh, Il Rodoto. Paul was... Um... Has Midnight River had any problems, or has he just been kind of? No, no, it's fine. He's been, he's been safe for safe for this. Okay. Um, I think he'll run a big race. I think he'll probably place. Um, but off one five one, I think it's a big big ask for him to win it. Dan likes him a lot, by the way. Um, you know, he saved him for this specifically. Well, he's got he's got good course form. He has, he has, especially this season. Excellent. Thank you very much, guys. Um, been there, haven't we? Haven't missed anyone. No, cool, excellent. <laughs> so I sort of lost my way then. <laughs> okay, uh, move on then to the mayor's novice hurdle. Uh, current favorite, another Henderson hot pot, Ian Lucia. Is she gonna win? Yes, <laughs> is that it? Dumb. Dumb. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Lucia for Ian. Uh, Johnny. <laughs> Is he not saying anything else? No, he doesn't. He can't have no, any more. The only, the only say, <laughs> I would just say, keep an eye on the cup. Maybe go each way. Uh, I think um, there's one that Matty likes. It's called Jatara. Uh, I think she had, um, I believe she was placed behind Astro Diamond, I think, last time out. The other one uh, is Magical Zoe. Uh, uh, the Zoe's, I, I prefer. I think she could be, uh, I think she's about 10 or 12 to 1. She could be uh, a good each way shout. But yeah, so Lucio and Maybe look out for those two for the places. Okay. Try that was short and sweet. Paul, what do you think? I actually think this is quite a good mayor's novice. Um, you know, in the past we've had, you know, will he turn up with horses we'd never heard of and one with one of them? Um, or we've had, you know, absolute standout horses. I think we've got a lot of good horses in this. I think this whole mayor's breeding program's really starting to shine through and this this renewal. We probably- need a mayor's bumper. <laughs> um, Lucia is the obvious one. Um, 
And, you know, if you took it, took her at face value, you know, she's been winning races very easily. Um, and, you know, clearly the apple of uh, Nikki Henson's eye, then, you know, you see why she's favourite. But I'm not, I don't think she jumps particularly well. She's not, she's not a great jumper of a hurdle. When I saw the last one, Paul, you say about it, I think it was her last race. She, she came up to the last and give it a good clump. And I know mm. she was that far clear ahead, but she, I can see, yeah, I can see your angle that she is. Good. I think she's just this, is a, this is a race that's deep, full of, you know, really good novice mares. Mm. Yeah, I've, I've, I've got a good bet on her, but I can't say I'm as confident as I was a couple of months ago. Um, and if I was starting afresh now, I'd definitely be taking her on. Um, you know, Astro Don is, is likely to go close. Um, a lot of joy's got some really smart flat form. Um, you know, Astro Ash, Ash, Ash I think she's probably too short on what she's achieved. She, you know, she's, she's had plenty of chances now to put up a big performance, and you know, the performances have been good without being out the top draw, if you know what I mean. Um, so I think she's she's one of the place rather than win. Um, a lot of joy, you know, very inexperienced. I think she might be better on better ground, you know, with that all that flat form. Um, and I think the other thing is, you know, she's won by showing pace. And I don't think this race will nece- necessarily be run to suit her. Um, but I think she could ultimately be very good. Um, so I think the top of the market is probably worth taking on. Um, there's a couple for me that I, I want to take them on with. Well, there's three that I like, um, but I'll, and I will name one. I like Foxy Girl. Um, after, you know, best part of two years off, she was entitled to need that race against Liberty Dance, and I thought she ran really well in the circumstances. Um, but she then took a really big step forward on Boxing Day at Limerick, and I've, I've had her in, in my mind ever since, and I was really taken with that run. Um, I rated that really highly. Um, so they've kept her fresh for this. De Bromhead knows how to win this race. He knows his, he knows Mare, his mare as well. Um, um, I think um, what she's done is better than either of those the two Mullins mares have produced so far, to be fair. Um, and she's second, a horse with no name. That's 16 to 1. Um, and horses running and staying as novices in this race and coming back the following year have got previous, as you guys know. Um, and she was only just beaten by Love Envoy. You know, how, how many horses in this race are going to be better than Love Envoy? You know, she's, she's going to go close on the right sort of ground in the mares this year. So um, um, another one that interested me is Jamie Snowden's You Wear It Well. Um, I thought that was a big run in the cello behind Hermes, Hermes Alain. Um, she's won three hurdles either side of that. Couple of, couple, a couple of romps over this trip uh, where she just absolutely r- 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 to the field, probably uh, better than Lucia in, in actual fact. Um, she'll stay the trip if it does get a bit tested. I've got no, no doubt with her for the trip. Um, but I think on balance, I'd probably go for the, the biggest price of all of the ones I've mentioned. I'd go for Foxy Girl at 20, 20 to 1 each way. Tell you what, Paul, that's music to my ears because I've been very keen on Foxy Girl all year too. Um, the horse that she beat um, in December actually went on and bolted up next time out as well. So obviously really sort of boosted that form. So yeah, <laughs> very happy you're keen on it too. Um, Johnny, where, where do you see this race going? Yeah, I mean, I'm a big fan of Lucia as well, really. But, um, yeah, jumping isn't the best at times, but I think she travels really, really strongly. And I, I just think this test will totally be up her street. So, you know, it might be one of them where she bolts it by 10 lengths and everyone says, oh, what a horse, you know. And it'd be good to see that, wouldn't it? One of the one of them bolting up and, you know, like Honeysuckle's uh, done in the past, you know, and become a, a top mare. So it'd be great that. But, um, yeah, yeah. Um, Ashro, I, I'm like Paul as well. I don't think she's quite done enough and probably a little bit short on, at the prices. Um, of the Zoes, I probably prefer Magical to Princess because I think um, she's a bit of a forgotten horse, Magical Zoe, because she's been sort of locked away for a couple of months. Um, and she was right, really impressive, I thought, uh, last time out. Zoe probably needs a bit sort of heavier, heavier ground, doesn't she, really, to, to be at her best. Um, one that I've sort of like got a, an eye on is if Impere Pass bolts up in the Ballymore, then I'd be I'd take a sharp interest then in the Model Kingdom. Um, she's turned up at sort of every dance this year and, and ran really consistently. 
got a lot of experience, a lot more than some of these others. Um, and so if he wins, then I'd be very, very keen on backing that each way in this race. But uh, Lucia be for win purposes and then Model Kingdom each way if, if Empere Pass bolts up in the Ballymore. That that model kingdom's also in the in the county. It's when I got my on as well. I think she's off a mark yeah. of like one thirty one. So I mean, if she gets in that, obviously remains to be seen where she does go. But I mean, if she yeah. gets in the county off one three one, I'd definitely be backing her. Yeah, I I, I was interested in her for that as well. Actually, I don't think she's going to get enough one three one. That'd be the problem. Um, I think she'll struggle to get in. Yeah, never know. Might sneak in at the bottom if a few of them decide to go elsewhere or don't want want to run on the ground or. You never know. <laughs> definitely, definitely worth highlighting. I, th I think she's gone unnoticed, so I think it's definitely worth highlighting. And Bo, what are your thoughts? I've been itching to talk about this race. <laughs> <laughs> Best till last. So, I've got quite a big bet down on Lucia. Um, she's actually be my biggest winner today if, if she went and did the business. So, I don't really want to talk. I get quite nervous when I talk about this race. Um, so I don't really want to talk about any others, really. Um, I think I think she's quite special. Um, I think all the talk of the Supreme shows you what Nikki thinks of her uh, and Nico thinks of her. Um, I think they know they've got a proper one on their hands. And I think you could be talking about in like a year's time, maybe like a, an Epiton in like a champion hurdle, like that sort of class. I'm not saying she's going to win a champion hurdle, but... I think she could be that that level. Um, yeah, she's a bit clunky at, at hurdles sometimes, but um, if she's 25 lengths clear of everything else and she just steadies over the last, that's fine by me. I'm not bothered. Um, the only thing I would say, um, if she was going to be beaten and the bet was going to go down, I really hope that it's uh, Henry that, that wins it. Um, I think that would just be an amazing story. Um, and just just to go back on the Lucia thing, actually, um, my my partner's called Lucia. It's not the reason I backed her, but <laughs> nah. my, my partner's Thanks. called Lucia. So uh, we're going to watch the race together at home. Um, so yeah, she'll either be moving out or we'll be going on holiday. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully on holiday, mate. <laughs> yeah, fingers mm. crossed for you. Brilliant. So that rounds up the uh, mayor's novice hurdle. We will then move on to the final race on the Thursday, which is the Kim Muir. Uh, another very short price in a handicap. Stumptown, who was very impressive last time out at Sandown. Bo, I'm going to come back to you. What are your thoughts on this race? Um, Stumptown is a horse that I'm quite annoyed with myself that I didn't manage to back and get on. Because I'm a bit like uh, the boys here. I like to make a book. And Stumptown's one that just completely passed me by. Um I didn't, I didn't manage to get him in the book, and he's obviously very short now, but I do really like his chances. Um, I like Dunboyne a lot. I think he's running the Thaestes. Um, was a really, really nice run. Um, just stayed on really well. Uh, and obviously last year when when they had Jack Kennedy uh, jocked up on him in the per attempts, they obviously thought that he was um, one of their, their better chances or their best chance. Um so he's a horse I like a lot. Um, but then I'm really interested in next destination. I don't know where he's going to go. Um, but he's, he's not... Yeah, apparently, him. like, he comes here. Yeah. He's coming to this race. He is. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, he's been transferred to Nicky Henderson. We last saw him uh, finishing second to Galvin around this course. Um, so, yeah, one four five. he could be pretty lethal. Um, so, yeah, I mean... I saw today you were quite keen on Am I Right, weren't you, Paul? Yeah, he's not really he's, uh, he's going to the Browns. Oh, he's going to the Browns. Is that where he's going? Yeah. Well, you think if, if they thought he has a chance in the Browns, you'd think he was well in for this, but you know. Hey yeah, on. it seems a strange decision that does. But... Okay, Johnny, what are your thoughts on this one? Um, yeah, I mean, everyone is raving about this stunt town, but obviously the price is long gone, so there's no way you know I'm going to get stuck into that at seven to two now. I'm actually really, really keen on one here, but he's 32 in the list at, at the minute, so he's going to need eight to come out. Uh, again, looking through the what's ahead of him in in the list, there is 
you know, there's going to be a few come out, but whether there's going to be eight, I, I don't know. And that would be uh, Bally Keel for Gordon Elliott. Um, he, he's still a novice, but he's had um, plenty of races this season. He's really well raced and he's not disgraced himself in, in many of the races against some graded horses and listed horses in quite a few of them. Um, but he got his day in the sun last time out at Fairy House where he won quite well, I thought. But unfortunately, the, the Irish handicapper didn't put him up and he stayed on one, two, five. Um, but then the English handicapper stuck four on him, which took him to one, two, nine. Could have done with maybe a couple more pounds, really, from the Irish handicapper, and he would have definitely got in. But and what I have noticed about him that is that um, the young lad Corey McGiven has ridden him the last three times, so he obviously gets on really well with him because he, he you know he's he's done well on him in in those races. So I suspect if he does get him, then he'd ride him, and obviously with that experience of riding him the three times, I think he'd have a really good chance. So it's a bit of a wait and see, really, for me on this because. I am really keen on him. Um, if he doesn't get in, then I'd probably go revert back to the old favourite Dunboyne in this. Um, yeah, I've, you know, followed him quite a bit, and I'll give him one more chance in it. But hopefully, Bally Keel gets in, and he, he's a good good chance for me if he does. Ian, what are your thoughts? Well, I'm totally fine because I I was frantically writing all my notes um, over the last few days to have. Am I right? And he was going to be my pick. And then obviously today he's been scratched. So I haven't got much else in this race, to be honest. I'll be, I'll be lying if I had. I do normally keep an eye on a on a horse called Angel's Dawn. Because whether she, I think she's 1-3-1 carrying 11 at the minute. Again, it's whether she gets in or not, or or he gets in. Um, but yeah, so it's, it's probably, one I, probably one I need to to look at again but um i'd be lying if i if i had a selection at the minute alex but uh yeah it was going to be am i right but um unfortunate really okay that's Sorry, all right guys. it looks sounds like it's uh going to be graham ultima or bus ram i right does it uh browns i think paul said uh, brown sorry okay um, okay so um I'll put a mine then. So my selection, uh, horse, horse I always back at Cheltenham. He's had some great form here. Captain Catastock for Fergal O'Brien. He's 33 to 1. A, a few of these horses still out really, for me, have to prove their stamina. But, I mean, he, he stayed four miles here before. Um, he has been rated as high as 142 before. And he's running in this off a rating of 132. So £10 lower than his highest mark. Um, last seen in February, running second. Uh, in the Edinburgh National, um, finished second to Magna Sam. He's not actually been, his mark's not been changed since then. So um, I think he could be competitive off this mark and he'll be certainly staying on at the end when a few of them are getting a bit tired. Paul, what do you like? Well, the Irish have got the top four in the market for this. And, you know, in all likelihood, you'd think they've got this race between those horses. Um I, I kind of agree with Stumptown. You know, the price has long gone on him. Um, but I'd have a question mark about him anyway if the ground comes up soft. And it's, you know, the forecasts, as they are at the moment, suggest it might do on the Thursday. Um, so I, I wouldn't be so keen if, uh, if I'd backed him on soft. Um, we saw Mr Incredible in the classic chase at Warwick um, on soft ground. So we know it, he handles it. But as I mentioned before, I don't think Willie really plots handicap chasers um you know and if he's running off something like his what his mark is then i don't think five to one's any real value for him either although he's, he's got patrick on you want to want a good amateur on board so you know there's a big plus there Pat, patrick could be worth a few pounds compared to some of the jockeys in the race um angels dawn was mentioned he needs five to come out i'm not sure they will which obviously has an impact on john's selection as well i don't think john's horse is going to get in um I think actually, ironically, anti post at 14 to 1. I think he, uh, she's a great bet for the Midlands National on the Saturday. I think that's where she'll end up. I think she'll go to the Midlands National. So, as a bonus selection, I'll put her, her at 14, 14 to 1 for the Midlands National. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, Dunboyne's the one I probably like most of all of the, the, the four Irish at the top of the market. Dunboyne's going to have Jamie Cott on. Um, massive bonus. Um, just reiterating, reiterating what Bo said, his run at Goran when he split carefully selected and pencil full of lead. I think that was really eye-catching. 
particularly the way he went through the race, just, you know, switched off. Um, and, you know, once, um, was it Sam Ewing that rode him? Bo, I can't remember. I think it might have been Sam yeah. Ewing. Um, once he put him into the race, he, he travelled really nicely, I thought. Um, that was on soft, on soft ground, which I think he's probably going to get here. So I think he's probably the, the best chance. To, and he's decent value at 10 to 1. Uh, British horse, horses, uh, a nice Lamborns run really well twice over course and distance this season. Um, Beauport's a really nice novice. Um, uh, it was, a, I think he was probably right something like 146 for Twist and Davis over hurdles. Bit of an experience though. Um, so he, he, that's the reason I probably wouldn't back him. The, the one I do like is Rapper. Um, Rapper's 25 to 1 for this. Uh, he's got really good course form. Uh, he hosed up over course and distance on New Year's Day. Um, I uh, do my own ratings. I had him on a career, career best rating at that day of 150. His current marks 142. Um, also, in addition to that, you know, small leap of faith um, is the soft ground on him. I think he he performs at his best on soft ground. His, um, his um, Results on soft ground, career results are 3 one, two, seven, four, one, three, one. The seventh was the only time he's running a graded race, and the fourth was his first time over, over fences when he was uh, pitched into a novice handicap chase on debut. Um, made a couple of mistakes, and he was just allowed to sort of coast home, really. If you take those two races out on soft ground at this level, he's 3 one, two, one, three. Um, So he's, he's won three times, placed three times from six races, and... Um, and the only time he's raced on on soft over fences is the day that he hosed up on New Year's Day. Um, I love Henry Daly, Daly as a, a trainer of chasers. Um, he just goes about his business and he just punches way above his weight. And I think twenty five to one for rappers an outstanding price. Um, I'd uh, I'd su- suggest anybody that hasn't backed him back him. Bloody always turn into a bet, Paul. I'll Every do time that now. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've, I've solved Ian's problem. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, yeah, one that uh, Matthew's very keen on as well. Uh, so he'll be happy that you've put that one up, Paul. I'm sure that'll fill him with some confidence. Um, so that's perfect. That wraps up uh, the third day then of the Chapman Festival. Uh, what I'm going to do is just go around each of you and just ask you your best bet for, for that Thursday. Is So, Johnny, who's your best bet? Um, Lucia, best bet for me, I think. Okay, I'm going to go appreciate it in the Turners. Ian? Uh, I will go Mighty Potter in the Turners. So? Uh, I don't want to voodoo Lucia, so I'm going to go Cool Cody in the plate. Excellent. And Paul? As tender as I am to agree with you, Alex, with uh, appreciate it, because I think uh, he's massively overpriced. He's a rare bit of value in the anti-post markets at uh, 4 to one nine to 2 I'm going to go a wrapper at 25 to 1 in the Kim Muir. <laughs> thank you very much uh so that then wraps up day three of the festival thanks again to Bo and to paul for joining us uh, this evening it's been a pleasure to have you both on the channel and um, please make sure you uh go ahead and follow their socials with paul obviously go and also follow rain it in which is the podcast that he's on um day four will be coming up shortly and we'll be uh, joined by two regulars on the channel jamie and scotty keep your eyes peeled best of luck for the festival and thanks all for joining thanks guys Cheers, boys. Thank you.